What's up, everybody? I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign W9FFF, a ham radio dude. And up here, I have two 17 foot telescoping antennas. And I want to talk about them a little bit here because one of them is a Wolf River coil telescoping antenna for 17 feet, and the other one is an LI Express special. But can you tell me which one? We're going to talk about it today, right now on Ham Radio Dude. Is it a good deal? Huh? We'll find out. So before we get started, I am going to talk about purchasing this item, the amount of time it took to receive this item from China. I've been testing this for approximately six months. It wasn't something that I just received and I'm like, let's throw a review together real quick. No, I've actually been testing this and you're going to see why I still would recommend this now broken in three piece, 17 foot telescoping antenna from LA Express, maybe even over something a little bit more popular, like one of those name brand antennas. Let's just get all the boring stuff out of the way and talk about the purchase real quick. In late February of 2022, I purchased these from liexpress.com and they were shipped from China. I received them in just a couple of weeks, which was pretty phenomenal for me coming from, from China. And as you could see here, the title says new one piece, 5.6 meter shortwave antenna and 5.6 meters. The feet is somewhere around 18 and a half feet. I don't have a calculator in my brain or anything, but, uh, notice I said one piece because the picture does show two, And that's not a big deal because I read the title and it said one piece. Uh, if I continue down in the description though, there is one other thing I kind of want to make you aware of actually a couple things. The link nut M10 working wire. And in the U S the standard is three ace 24. So that's not going to work in your typical, for example, like if you had a mag mount that you were going to put this in or a dude spike, whatever you choose. Uh, what I ended up doing is I bought a coupler from ACE hardware and I rethreaded the coupler on one side to an M10. And then on the other side, it was three ace 24. The thing now is though, is these things are capable of being purchased with the adapter already built in, not necessarily this one here, which costs $21 and 11 cents each. Uh, but there are some other ones online for a couple of bucks more that will give you that adapter. And I should also mention in that sense that there are some of these exact antennas on LI express for like 15 or $16. I'm not sponsored. I don't care where you buy them from. Uh, but that's a pretty phenomenal deal if everything's going to work okay, right? Um, so I went ahead then and I was just reading a few other things on here. And what I noticed was a uh, pole rod material. 201 strengthened stainless steel, higher than the original steel or strength, brightness, lifelong stainless, and reduced the erection sagging. Kind of surprised that this antenna is uh, not blue. Right now on both sides of me, I have two 17 foot telescoping antennas. And if you're not familiar, that just basically means I'll be able to get 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, 11 meters, 10 meters, six meters. Notice I have another one right here that's broken in two. Uh, one of them is an LI Express special. And I made this dipole that I've been testing and I would extend this out to 17 feet on each side. And that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight, especially the further out you go on the antenna, the more, um, the more, the word was stress test, uh, stress. So the more or the further out you have either of these antennas, the more stress there is toward the center. And that worked out well for me because I've been actually testing three or four things all summer long. The Gigaparts carbon fiber mast, the piece that I made for the top of the carbon fiber mast, and then these two antennas. So really just this LI Express antenna, but the Wolf River coil was obviously along. So while I'm testing out these antennas, I did do one LI Express antenna and one Wolf River coil the whole summer because I wanted to know, is one of them gonna break before the other? And the first time at 25 feet with no guy wire support on the Gigaparts carbon fiber mast, and these were out for 20 meters, around 16 and a half to 17 feet. The first time they blew over, the tip of this antenna did break off. Now that's not a huge deal because it was still completely fine on 20 meters. You just have to watch yourself so you don't bleed yourself. You see what I just did? So that's been fine. And I've been like, you know what? If that's all that happens, great. Uh, furthermore, let me get you a close up of these here. But every section of the telescoping antenna 
it would bend significantly, but never came out or unclipped out of the section before it. One thing I will mention about the quality of the LI Express antenna versus the quality of the Wolf River coil antenna is this metal here is very thin. In fact, that's a lot more lightweight than the Wolf River coil. That worked in my favor for this whole demonstration experiment because, uh, well, I had less weight to carry. And also when I had this 25 feet in the air, it was putting less stress on my centerpiece or my, <laughs> my carbon fiber mast mount. So you got to recognize that the reason there's a reduction in the erection sagging is because it's a lightweight, cheap metal. When you have more weight and you're doing something like a horizontal dipole, which is kind of uncommon for these things, right? But you're going to have more sag because there's more weight. Um, but lighter isn't always better and thinner material isn't always better because ultimately what then happened when I had it out at... 17 feet was it ripped like literally it just it's almost like a tin foil it just kind of like ripped off you see that and so this antenna no longer was usable it's 201 stainless steel is what that li express specially uses and since it is so thin you got to keep in mind that your bandwidth might not be as wide when tuning a radio i didn't have a problem on 20 meters with my dipole um, however, if you're going to use something like a coil, you might see some fluctuations or, or a narrower bandwidth. You might have to tune the antenna a little bit more if you're jumping between different frequencies in the band. Uh, but also I wanted to mention that the LA Express special uses 201 stainless steel, which is supposed to be a stronger steel than 301. Uh, I don't know what Wolf River coil uses or what MFJ uses, but what I will say is even though the Wolf River coil is a lot heavier, I shouldn't say a lot, it's a little bit heavier. It was a lot more durable than the LI Express lightweight, thin stainless steel antenna. So you got to keep that in mind too, that just because it's lightweight doesn't mean it's going to be uh, more or less susceptible to being damaged because of stress. Does that make sense? Uh, so very thin metal, but I never really had a problem. And, and you got to recognize that what I'm doing here is yes, I could actually have the die pull out and I have this little pulley here. So on each end, I could bring a rope in and I could do some strain relief as you could see like that right there. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted to see how stressed these antennas can both be. Wolf River Coil did fine. I've had that one for years. It did fine. LI Express did break the first time. And then after what was uh, four more months, that's when I lost this bottom piece here. This has been a new one though. And I haven't had any problems with the new one either. Once I got over that hurdle though, no big deal. I've had success activating uh, with the dipole in particular on all on my activations or just when I'm operating radio. People are loving the way I sound. Uh, I'm killing it way better than any NFED that I've ever used. Now it's a lot of gear to, to bring out, but we'll talk about the dimensions here real quick. Foley collapsed. This is 21 and three quarters of an inch. Fully expanded 18 feet, four and three quarters of an inch. As we continue to expand this, the sections will get smaller. And when they get smaller, the aluminum feels cheaper and less durable. At the very base of the antenna itself, we're looking at, I think, 0.66 inches. 0.67 inches, 0.68 inches, right around there. And when we fully expand it, the top portion is very, very tiny. We're looking at 0.1180 inches. I don't even know if I could put that on the screen. There you go. As far as weight is concerned, I can't necessarily weigh this right now. My scale doesn't work and there's no weight indicated on the website, but as I've already mentioned, it's a little bit lighter than the Wolf River coil telescoping antenna. One other thing I want to mention this is 201 stainless steel, which I read the internet and the internet never lies. They say that 201 stainless steel is not as effective at preventing corrosion. Although I didn't have a problem all summer long, I also didn't let these sit outside all summer long. Okay. And 
in a backpack, that's not too bad. So maybe you just carry one of these and you carry like a dude spike or some kind of ground spike and you have a vertical antenna. I think really that's what these were made for, right? <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't have any problem recommending this even in high winds to, uh, to be used as a vertical. In fact, here, even though this is broke, I'm still like swinging it and I'm swinging it and there we go, I finally broke it. But that was pretty, uh, what's the word? That was pretty aggressive in what I was doing right there, as you could see. And I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the case. Yeah, it might get a little windy, but I don't think I'm going to be swinging it like I'm playing swords like I just was. Now, the nice thing also about these antennas that I got off of LI Express was they came in multiple sizes. So maybe you don't need 17 feet. You could actually get smaller antennas as well, which I did use for a two meter dipole. I could do two meters and I could extend it out to six and I could even bring it out to 10, I think it was. It wasn't a problem. So that's been pretty nice as well. Like I mentioned though, this is very cheap aluminum. I think I just compared it to tin foil. And, you know, the question then comes is, do you recommend an antenna that's going to break or may break? And I guess the answer to that question would be, um, A, how much do you have to spend? And B, how aggressive or gentle are you with your equipment? If you guys haven't been able to tell yet, I'm always aggressive with my equipment, whether it's me throwing radios in water or stress testing out, and you know, uh, antennas. <laughs> Uh, gee, I think I have an episode coming up where I'm swimming in the water with one of my radios. Maybe. So if you're not going to be super aggressive and you're going to take care of your equipment and not like mutilate it, if you're willing to go out there and you're using a vertical, but you, you take the vertical down if the winds are getting extremely, you know, 80 mile an hour winds, I don't think this thing is going to survive, but um, it did survive a couple of falls. Like I said, it, even after it fell the first time and that tip broke off, I think it fell three or four more times before that centerpiece broke off. And that's not even the reason that centerpiece actually broke off. I don't know really what else to say. I bought a $21 antenna on LI Express. I activated a park today in easily less than an hour with 50 some odd contacts. I was getting great audio reports. It did break. I replaced it. This one's been fine, uh, but this is extreme stress. If you're going to use this as a vertical antenna, it'll be fine. Uh, I don't really see much of a problem otherwise. It's a lot lighter than the Wolf River coil. And as a close up goes, you could see what I was talking about with the three A's versus the, what is maybe a, an M10 or something like that. But also furthermore, the Wolf River coil kind of laps over to the end, whereas you see the brass here and exposed. All right, we're wrapping it up here. And the question is probably, would I buy another LI Express antenna? And now that they do make or sell these with the adapter for the 3 Ace, that eliminates that problem, which was a pain. Um, so that's kind of cool. The walls on the LI Express special antenna are definitely thinner than any of the, the antennas that you're gonna find in the market right now that are telescoping and similar like the Wolf River Coil or the MFJ. And, you know, not naming any names and not throwing anybody under the bus here, but we're in this time where a lot of people are starting to have supply issues. And if you buy three of these for the price of one and one breaks, you might have to wait one month, two months, three months, six months for a replacement. When if you already bought three of them for the same price, you have your replacement ready to go. So, you know, consider that if, all you could afford is a $21 antenna. Hey, go for the $21 antenna. If you want quality that's going to last years and years and years, go with one of the name brands. Like I really do like the Wolf River Coil antenna. I would link it, but I can't find it on their website. Hey, Wolf River Coil, call me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we stand on this. Great antenna for uh, normal use, stress testing it to an extreme. It didn't hold up. The Wolf River Coil did. Uh, I'll let you be the judge. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Amateur Radio Call Sign W9FFF. Had a good time making this video. 73. Okay, Uniform. 
All right, Victor Echo 5 X-ray uniform, I believe it was. Uh, you're a 5959 in the park, Kilo 1000. Yeah, Roger, Roger. You have the call correct. And you're also 59, also 59 or at the trigger Kilo, Roger. Copy the 59 into Saska Sask Saskatchewan. Excuse me, I got to work on that one. Have a great day, sir. Yeah, Roger. It's easier to say sugar kilo. Anyway, you have a great one also, 7-3. I'm just going to say sugar kilo for now.